rejoice and be glad in it. If you're happy to be in the house of the Lord, one more time, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Please stand on your feet all over the house for the bringing in of the light. Good morning again. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Hearts of Mount Zion United Methodist Church. I am Lydia Head, standing in for Sister Sylvia Brooker this morning. Let us recite our vision together. We are an inviting church that shows love by nurturing our members and empowering them to grow spiritually in God's word and reaching out to share the good news of Jesus. Our call to worship the King of Kings is raised in glory. Christ is the throne at the right hand of God. Come, let us worship and bow down to the Lord our Creator. Let us all our praise for Christ our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn, It is Well with My Soul. Insert in your bulletin.
please join me for the opening prayer. We come this day rejoicing in the presence of the King of Kings, Jesus Christ. At his birth, the angels proclaimed his name to be Emmanuel, God with us. Today, in this place, in this time of worship, may we truly feel the power and the presence of Jesus Christ in our lives. May our hearts and spirits be warm and challenged to proclaim with our lives. Christ is Lord. Amen. This time we'll have our announcements and recognitions of, of visitors. Is that me? Is that me? Yes. And I have an announcement. Okay. All right. Um, Tuesday we have a before and after care meeting at 5 p.m. Thursday is 6.30 p.m. Joint choir rehearsal, Thanksgiving Day. Um, Tuesday, Sunday. I'm sorry. Tuesday choir rehearsal. Oh, oh, right after the meeting, right? Right. Okay, Thursday, um, so, well, that was the same, the joint choir rehearsal, but that's Tuesday. Yes, Excuse sir. me. Yes. Sunday, 8.30 a.m., uh, Sunday school, and 10 a.m. church, the 52nd anniversary celebration. Happy anniversary to all our November birthdays, and happy anniversary to all celebrating the November anniversary. May God continue to bless you. Please read and give attention to the following announcements. Everyone, please remember to register your attendance by checking in with an usher. Special charge conference. The district superintendent has called a special charge conference to be held December 2nd, 2001 at 5.30 p.m. via Zoom to authorize the trustees of this church to act on the charge conference behalf regarding the current BSA bankruptcy proceedings. And there's the, the Zoom link, and the meeting ID is 856-6792-3918. For the before and after care, we are holding a before after care meeting for the entire church. Uh, please come out and hear about the program and consider signing up to volunteer. Okay, again, uh, the meeting, after the meeting, uh, the choir will have practice. Bible study is canceled. There will be no Bible study this week. All Bible studies will resume next week. Aldersgate needs Thanksgiving delivery drivers. Aldersgate is looking for volunteer drivers. If you would like to be a volunteer delivery driver, please call the Turkey Hotline at 985-326-1952 or email them at slidothanksgiving at gmail.com. Our church anniversary is scheduled for Sunday, November 28, 2001, 2021, during the 10 a.m. service. This is the 52nd anniversary. You pay your $52. The octogenarian Christmas baskets, Hearts of Mount Zion is planning to prepare Christmas fruit baskets for our octogenarians. We are requesting fruit donations and our monetary donations for this event. Please make a note for the Christmas basket on your offering envelope or online donation. All fruit should be de delivered to the church between December 8th through 10th, 2021. Confirmation class will begin Saturday, January 8th at 11.30 a.m. Confirmation class is important for helping our youth understand faith and our triune God and church. Youth age 11 and up and grade 6 and up may participate. That's all the announcements I have, Pastor. I just want to follow up on uh, the announcement that was read about the special charge conference. The pur purpose of this charge con conference is twofold. Our denomination got involved with, the, the, uh, with this lawsuit, the bankruptcy, because they wanted to ensure justice for the victims and protection for the church. And so every church that ever had a Boy Scout troop had to file a proof of claim, which we did back in 2019. So it is very important that our leaders show up for this Zoom conference call. It is to authorize the trustees to attend a training 
so that they know how to vote uh, on a ballot that will be given to them soon. So we've got to have more. At our last charge conference, only one person showed up. Uh, and that was the bare minimum in order for us to vote. So to keep us, because the pastors can't vote in that on the charge conference. So to keep us uh, from uh, having to have a, our own single charge conference, please show up on December the 2nd. The Zoom information has already been emailed to everybody in the, co uh, the congregation, but we will email it again to make sure that we have proper attendance. Thank you for your attention to this important matter. Are there any visitors this morning? <coughs> Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Our first scripture lesson this morning comes from the Old Testament, 2 Samuel 23rd chapter, verses 1 through 7. Remain seated. Now these are the last words of David, the oracle of David, son of Jesse, the oracle of the man whom God exalted, the anointed of God, of Jacob, the favorite of the strong one of Israel. The Spirit of the Lord speaks through me. His word is upon my tongue. The God of Israel has spoken. The rock of Israel has said to me, one who rules over people justly, ruling in the fear of God, is like the light of the morning, like the sun rising on a cloudless morning, gleaming from the rain on the grassy land. Is not my house like this with God? For he has made with me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things and secure. Will he not cause to prosper all my help and my desire? But the godless are all like thorns that are thrown away, for they cannot be picked up with the hand. To touch them, one uses an iron bar or the shaft of a spear, and they are entirely consumed in fire on the spot. Amen. Amen. Our second scripture lesson comes from the New Testament. Please stand. John 18th chapter, verses 33 through 37. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus, Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, so you are a king, Jesus answered. You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. This is the word of God for the people of God. Yeah. Thanks be to God. Yeah. Our affirmation of faith, I believe. I believe.
this time we'll have a song of praise, jubilant voice choir, followed by a pastoral prayer and altar call. Running for a long time. Time is winding up. You better make up your mind. It's getting late in the evening. The sun is going down. Need to get it right, get it right. While he may be found, I want to know where to stand. Somebody tell me who is on the Lord's side. I want to know where to stand. Somebody tell me who is on the Lord's side. I want to know where do you stand. Who is on the Lord's side. I'm on the Lord's side. You got to work. You got to work. Work while it's day. For the night is coming and you can't find your way. Oh, sinner, I wonder what will you do? You got to choose today because tomorrow's not promised to you. I want to know where do you stand? Somebody tell me who is on the Lord's side. I want to know where do you stand? Somebody tell me who is on the Lord's side. I want to know where do you stand. Somebody help me. Who is on the Lord's side. I'm on the Lord's side. Get up. If you're on the Lord's side. On the Lord's side, get up. If you on the Lord's side, I'm on the Lord's. Are you on the Lord's? Why aren't you on the prayer time and as always we lift up the names of those on our sick and shut in list Angela Brown Willie Brown Viola Collins who is in the hospital and I will be going to see her this morning after church Maggie Dorsey Crane Kenneth Fields David Garino 
Alma Harrison, Philip Harrison, Darlene Hart, Desmond Hart, Cedric Hart, Lionel Jackson, Pauline Javery, Isabel Jenkins, Eugene Lee, Oleander Lester, Joe Malone, Sadie McCaskill, Arvis Porter, John Porter, Mary Rollins, Adrian Taylor, and Crystal Williams. Let us pray. Most holy and gracious God, we come this day with bowed down heads and humble hearts. We come giving you thanks and praise for the things that you have done in our lives. We pray this morning for all those on our sick and shut-in list, Lord. Please give healing where healing is needed and peace where peace is needed. We ask your blessings on all those who may be grieving. We pray that you touch them and give them your peace that passes all understanding. Lord, we pray for our church and all of its ministries. We pray for our leaders, Lord God. Continue to strengthen them and help them to re not to be weary in doing what is right. Help them to remember that only what they do for you will last. We pray, Lord God, for this old sin-sick world. There is so much hate and violence in this world. We call out to you, Lord, how long must we endure this. Even so, we keep our faith and trust in you. We may not know how, we may not know when, but we know that your justice will someday heal our land. And so, Lord God, we just keep on holding on to your unchanging hand. Today is Christ the King Sunday. And on this day, we give you thanks for your son, Jesus, who is not only the King of Kings, the ruler of all nations, he is the ruler of our lives. And we bow down to him in every area of our lives. And we thank you for our King Jesus. Because if it had not been for Jesus on our side, where would any of us be? Lord God, we pray for our nation and our leaders that they may lead by your wisdom and your justice. Things don't look right now, but we know in time you will work all things together for our good. We pray all these things in the matchless name of your son, Jesus, our King. And all God's children said, thank you, Lord, and amen. At this time, I'm going to have our Ministry of Music, Jubilant Voice Choir, Let Go and Let God, followed by a sermon by a pastor, Jesus is King.
couldn't seem to fall asleep There was so much on my mind Searching for that peace But the peace I could not find So then I kneeled down to pray Praying help me please But he said you don't have to cry Cause I'll supply all your needs Soon as I stop worrying When I let go That's when things When I let go when I let God let God have his way there's so much going on sometimes I can't find my way and oftentimes I struggle struggle from day to day I have to realize that it's not my battle it's not my battle to fight I have to know if I put it in your hands Everything will be alright yeah. Soon as I stop worrying I can let it go I can let God That's when things start, things start happening. Oh, when I let go, when I let God, let go, let God, let go, and let God, let go, let God, oh, let it go. And let God let go and let God my brother let go and let God my sister you can't handle it let God oh let it go and let God let go and let God oh let go and let God he's the only one with the answers just let God he can handle it all, yes he can. Let God, with tears in your eyes, just let God. He feels your pain, and he knows your heart. He knows your issues, he knows your struggles. So let it go, and let God, soon as, soon as I stop worrying. Then and only then can I, I can let go, I can let God, that's when things, things start happening, when I let go, when I let God, let God have his way. Let the church say amen. amen. Stop worrying and let God have his way. Our text this morning comes from Revelations. I am going, the sermon will concentrate on verses 4 through 8, but I want to start at the first verse. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him 
to show his servants what must soon take place. <laughs> he made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who testified to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, even to all that he saw. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear and keep what is written in it, for the time is near. John, to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful servant, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. Amen. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on this account, all the tribes of the earth will well. So it is to be. Amen. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Most holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for this day. We thank you for another opportunity to share a word from you with your people. We pray that as your word goes forth that it will not return to you void but accomplish what you set it out to do. Lord God, remove me from me, hide me beneath the cross, beneath the drippings of your precious blood. And when I speak, let it be your voice that is heard. And when I'm seen, may it be you that is seen. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my, our, <clears throat> our rock and redeemer. Let the church say amen. amen. It is not unusual to find people who lack respect for authority. The truth is, too many people have witnessed those in authority abuse their power. So I get it. When you see enough abuse of power by those with authority, it, it's enough to make anyone suspect of authority. Although I understand why many people don't respect or even trust authority, and I believe that respect should be earned, I think that a lack of respect has gotten out of control. Formerly respected members of the community are no longer respected, including teachers and preachers, just to name a few. It has gotten so bad that people don't respect doctors and scientists. Everyone is suspect. We have gotten to the point where our lack of authority has spilled over into our spiritual lives. Not only do some people no longer respect their spiritual leaders, they don't respect the word of God or Jesus. This is unfortunate because the power and authority of Jesus is not like the power and authority of the world. The power and authority of Jesus is wielded in love, 
not by fear and coercion. The power and authority of Jesus is not used to get more and more for Jesus. It's used to help all people. Jesus doesn't rule in favor of the rich and the powerful of the world, but in favor of the least and the powerless. That is why on this Christ the King Sunday, we remember with joy that Jesus is the King of Kings. Yes. And we respect and honor his authority over every aspect of our lives. Yes. Our text comes from a letter written by John the prophet. John respected and honored the authority of Jesus. And he was in prison because of it. It's fair to say that Revelations is one of the most understood writings in the Bible. The symbolism used in Revelations can be confusing and frightening. But in truth, Revelations was not written to scare us. It was written to give us hope and power to stand firm in our faith no matter what was going on around us in the world. Amen. Revelations remind us, reminds us that evil will rear its ugly head, but evil will not win because Jesus has got the victory. We can keep our faith in Jesus. In the opening words of this letter, John clearly states that his purpose was to share the things that would soon take place. He urges the seven churches to hold on to their faith in the midst of these things. John reminds the churches that they can hold on because of who Jesus is and what Jesus has done. In this letter, John shares a vision and a message he received from the Lord. This message was much needed because one or two things were happening to the churches in Asia. Either they were falling away from the faith because of persecution, or they were becoming too accommodating to the culture. Persecution of Christians who proclaimed that Jesus was king was not uncommon in John's time. In fact, as I mentioned before, that's why he was in jail. It was against the law to proclaim any one king except the emperor. In our country, we may be persecuted for a lot of things, but it's pretty safe to say we will never be persecuted because we are Christian. In addition to falling away from the faith because of persecution, the churches had become too accommodating to the culture. In other words, everything that was going on in the world was going on in the church. Unfortunately, accommodation to the culture is still a thing in the church today. It looks like church is changing worship time so folk can go to a game. It looks like having an American flag in the sanctuary. How many of you know that everything that goes on in the world is not okay with Jesus? It's okay to go to a game, but it's not okay to put the game before Jesus. It's okay to be patriotic, but it's not okay to put patriotism on par or before Jesus. It's okay to follow politics, but it's not okay to put politics before Jesus. I don't know why I let myself get shocked anymore about some of the things that people do in the world, but I still do. Yeah. I was shocked by a video of so-called Christians in a church shouting the new obscenity to put down President Ob uh, Biden. Yeah. Let's go, Brandon. They were doing this in the church house. No matter what folk think of Biden, 
It is totally disrespectful to Jesus to be sitting in his church shouting obscenity. When African American preachers carried Bibles and showed up to pray for justice in Georgia, they were called a lynch mob because folk have let their disdain of African Americans get in the way of honoring Jesus. So this message from John still needs to be heard in the church and in the world. We still need encouragement to stand firm in our faith. Christians need to get back to scriptural faith or what Wesley called scriptural holiness. And we need to get away from that whatever I think or feel kind of faith. Christians need to remember, come what may, Jesus is our king. Standing uh, on our faith in Jesus, we will resist the effort of people who get in our way of worshiping Jesus. We will resist letting our personal struggles keep us from being and doing what Jesus called us to do. We resist letting circumstances in the world keep us from honoring Jesus. In this life, folk are going to try and influence us to do things that are contrary to what Jesus taught us. They're going to try to influence us and turn our hearts far away from Jesus. As we keep our faith in King Jesus, we understand that in this life, We are going to struggle with all kinds of things, but we keep our uh, on living our lives according to the will and way of our King Jesus. As we think about the world today, I can't help but think about the words from that old temptation song, Ball of Confusion. Around and around we go, where the world's headed, nobody knows. That's what the world is today, a ball of confusion. Folk in position of power seem like they're not happy unless there is confusion going on. Folk in power like to keep causing as much confusion as possible. If you think I'm exaggerating, just follow the news on any day and you will find much news detailing the confusion of the day. People are so confused, they think the pandemic is not real, even though to date over 775,000 people have lost their lives in the pandemic right here in our own country. People are so confused, they resist wearing masks and getting vaccinated, two things that will keep themselves and everyone else safe. So as we stand on our faith, We don't have to let the ball of confusion in the world keep us from honoring Jesus. We recognize the confusion for what it is. We understand that God is not the author of confusion. None of the confusion that is going on in the world today is ordained by God. In the midst of this confusion, we can praise our King Jesus. In this ball of confusion where we find no rest, no peace, or even hope, Jesus, our King, gives us clarity, rest, peace, and hope. Our faith in Jesus reminds us that the confusion in the world is only temporary, but Jesus is and does is, but what Jesus is and does is from everlasting to everlasting. We can hold on to our faith in our risen Savior no matter how confused the world around us may be. Our text reminds us that Jesus is the faithful witness to our almighty God. He is the first to be raised from the dead by God and who still lives. He is the ruler of kings of the earth. Not only is Jesus all of that, Jesus loves us. Jesus loves us so much that 
While we were still stuck in sin, he gave his life for us. That proves his love for us. Jesus lives and frees us from sin and death. He breaks every chain of sin that keeps us from being what we were created to be. He cleanses us, he cleanses us from all sin and unrighteousness that separates us from God. We were created to worship God. And Revelations reminds us that Jesus is coming down to earth to establish a new Jerusalem and we will worship him for all eternity. This is our purpose in the church to worship our one and only true and living God. Our worship now is just a foretaste of the worship that we will do for all eternity. God gives us all kinds of opportunities to be and do all kinds of things in this world. In this world, we can be doctors, nurses, entrepreneurs, teachers, athletes, or musicians. We can do whatever we put our mind to do. Even so, our number one purpose is to worship God. As we honor and respect the authority and power of Jesus in our lives, we are happy and blessed, and we bow down to no one but Jesus. We place no one above Jesus. Jesus, our king, is our all and our all. Jesus is the king of kings and the Lord of lords, and we live like we know we are his people. We live in a manner that Jesus uh, can find no fault in us or his church. Strengthened by his grace, we are faithful to Jesus, no matter how the ball of confusion in the world attempts to lead us astray. Strengthened by his grace, we stand faithfully in God's truth and word. We live believing more in the word of God than anything the world may tell us. When we know that Jesus is our king, we live our lives on fire for Jesus. We live our lives sold out for Jesus. We live our lives with wisdom, and we aren't fooled by the powers, principalities, and evil forces of wickedness in high places. When folk tell us, vote for me and I'll set you free, we know that it's a lie straight from hell. Only Jesus can set us free. When we vote in the world, we vote for mere people to run the government, not our souls. Only Jesus is the lover of our souls. That is why I came to tell you this morning, don't be distracted by the ball of confusion in the world. Don't let your hope in the authority and powers of this world make you take your hope and trust in Jesus away. He is the King of Kings. He is who is and who was and who is to come. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. We are in his loving hands. In his loving hands, we can anticipate a future with hope, joy, and peace. I don't know about you. I think that's good news. I think that's such good news. We ought to dance and shout about it. I think it's such good news. We ought to praise our King Jesus about it. With all that is within us, we ought to praise the Lord today. We ought to give thanks and praise to our King Jesus. Jesus is the King of kings. He is without end. So give him dominion over your life. Give him honor. Give him praise. And realize that the ball of confusion in this world can't stop our king's will for, uh, for us. He is the source and the truth of all life. We 
when we can't trust any other authority in this world, we can always trust our King Jesus. He is our everything. He is our all in all. Jesus is the same today as he was at creation. What he did at the beginning of time, he's still doing it now. His grace and peace is still active in this world and it is active forever and ever and always will be. He is our everything. So if you're gonna bow down to anyone, if you're gonna give anybody praise, give it to King Jesus. He is our everything. Let the church say amen. It is that time in our worship service when we open the doors of the church. There may be someone here or someone watching by live stream looking for a church home. There may be someone looking to learn what it means to serve King Jesus. If that describes you, I invite you today to come. Come and become a member of this great church. A church that already understands that Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Won't you come today because tomorrow might be too late. You can come on membership transfer. You can come on profession of faith. As the choir sings, come to Jesus. Won't you come? This is your time. Stand on your feet all over the house. In our service where we give back to God just a little of what he blessed us with. Amen. Our offertory scripture is a lo pretty long, five verses, but I love it because it tells us even if you don't have enough with the spirit of ge generosity, if you think you don't have enough rather, right. with the spirit of generosity you can give. Won't you read it with me, please? We want you to know, brothers, about the grace of God that has been given to the churches of Macedonia for affliction. Their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For they gave according to their means, and I can testify, and beyond their means, for their own accord begging us earnestly for the favor of taking a part in the plea for the saints. And this, not what you expected, but they gave themselves first to the Lord and then to the will of God. Let us pray. Most holy and gracious God, we come today with the spirit of generosity of the Macedonia church. Yes. We give, Lord, not
because we have to, but because we love you. And that by giving, we participate in every ministry of the church. And so, Lord, as we prepare our gifts, our tithes and our offerings this day, we ask your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As the choir sings the offertory hymn, you may prepare your tithes and offerings, and ushers will be standing in the back to receive them as you leave.
I call the acolytes, I have one uh, other announcement to make. In 2019, we were going to have confirmation class, but we only had one child. Uh, early next year, we're going to have confirmation again, even if it's with that one child. But I want all of you to think about your grandchildren who are at least sixth grade and up and encourage them to come because our children have to come to a spiritual and intellectual understanding of their faith. They have to be able to claim Jesus as king in their life on their own without their parents and grandparents telling them. So pass the word. We're going to do that um, every Saturday in July, and you'll hear more about it later. I mean, January, <laughs> July, I'm going to be at the house. Okay, acolytes. Yes. Yeah.